Good day everyone and welcome to this gameplay guide for Magical Sorcerer. It will consist out of two parts. In this first bit I will explain some more basic stuff like defensive rotations, offensive rotations, some things to mind. Um, and in the second part I will have some gameplay on which I will do a live commentary. If you want more information on what builds to run, I recommend looking at the uh, build guide. Here I will purely deal with tactics that I use in combat. So I'm going to start here, um, just against the target dummy of course, with uh, offensive um, rotations. And first thing I'm going to tell you is that Sorcerer has a lot of them, but the idea is always to make some kind of burst with uh, Curse and Ender's Fury. And just one basic example of a rotation you can do is Curse into Fury, into Elemental Weapon, into Streak, into Fragment. But there is more. Another one that is good as well is Curse, into Fury, into Streak, into Fragment. And then maybe an Elemental Weapon afterwards to finish off the person you are fighting. These all kind of depend on what kind of enemy you are fighting and what kind of situation you are. Somebody that is squishy will it will be better to use that second rotation against somebody that is squishy. It's better to use the first rotation against somebody that is more tanky, but maybe, I don't know, doesn't break free as fast, or stuff like that. And in combat, you'll see me a lot, you'll see me use a lot of variations on that. Sometimes I will just not use uh, Fury and I will just do this combination. Just a curse into elemental weapon into. Uh, I mean, into streak, into elemental weapon or fragment, um, and but the the two first combos that I mentioned are just good places to begin with. If you're beginner at master, just repeating those combos over and over again is going to be the best option. And the main take-home message of all of this is that you want to work with bursts. You don't want to deal with setting up a bunch of dots on the enemies because, well, Sorcerer doesn't have any. You don't want to stay on the offense for longer than about like six seconds because that's how Sorcerer works. It's a class that focuses on dealing burst damage to an enemy and then retreating, healing up or shielding or dark conversion or whatever and then trying another burst. So that's why it's a good idea to just do one quick burst of you know whatever choice you want and then you go you shield up again you cast your buffs etc now this brings me to the defensive rotations of course um one important staple rule if you're a beginner at master again is to always have a shield up when you are in combat so if you are attacking somebody or somebody is attacking you no matter what always keep one shield up and Suppose that you're just damaging somebody and nothing is hitting you, that's when you work with those burst rotations. So you do burst rotation and all that, well first you cast a shield, and then you do burst rotation and all that, you, you try your best at killing the enemy. If it doesn't do anything, you just go back, you cast another shield, and you repeat. Just like that. But one of the main mistakes that beginning mass works make is letting their shields drop. And next to that one shield that you have to keep up, there is of course a defensive rotation for when you do get pressured a lot and you're not focusing on like bursting down enemy anymore. And that has a specific shield order, which is first hardened war, then dampened magic, and then lastly, if you have taken damage on your health, you also cast a healing ward. And there's no point in casting healing ward if you are like at 100% health, even if you are still at like 80% health or something or 70, there is not really a point. Especially in that case, it is also better if you are CC immune, so suppose somebody attacked you and instantly CC'd you, you break free and then you do your uh, defensive rotation, so you cast Hardened Ward, Dampened Magic, and then you are CC immune and your shields are not taking too much pressure so they don't go down instantly, then you can also cast a Dark Conversion after that. It's also going to heal you, but most, most more importantly, it will give sustain at the same time. And because you are CC immune, immune, people cannot bash you or interrupt you uh, in any way. So that is a useful like trick to have as well, for especially when it comes to sustain. Um, and then next to that, if if you are taking damage from multiple people or one person that has a lot of damage, that is the time where you also get other tactics in uh, next to your shield stacking. And the number one for that is just tweak. If I have some, let's say a you know stand up player on me in melee range hitting me. I can shield as much as I want, he can keep on hitting me. But if I do one streak, 
there's no more damage going to be on me because he will, he will not be in melee range, he will be CC'd as well, that's a defensive CC. And then I have time, I have time to cast the shield if I want, or dark conversion, or even setting up a defend, an, an offensive rotation like that. Um, so that's something important to keep in mind for when you're taking all the damage. And then the second thing to keep in mind is roll dodges. Say you're fighting an enemy magical sorcerer, or when you're just in open world, you're taking pressure from multiple people, something like that. Roll dodge is your number one tool basically to avoid damage and to keep people from locking you down. Now there's a lot of situations in which you can roll dodge. Um, an example is what I just mentioned, where you just take a lot of damage and you need something more than shield stacking to reduce the damage. Then you just animation cancel a shield into a roll dodge like that. Um, the second situation in which you roll dodge is a bit more offensively oriented. Though it also has defensive purposes. Say if I'm like uh, finishing, like bursting an enemy, and I've cast some some skills into him like that. See, this is another example of like a random burst combo that you know all, all this kind of random stuff that you'll see me use. But if the enemy is after that at like 10% health or something, and I know that one skill is going to um, finish him off. That's a good time to do another roll dodge because if I'm I'm, I'm in one VX. I have a bunch of other people hitting me at the same time quite a lot. So after I have done my burst combo, 90 attempts in health, I can do another elemental uh, weapon light attack, cancel it to a roll dodge. It's going to make it a bit faster, especially if you have a fragment like to, to finish the enemy off with. It goes very fast like that. But on top of that, you will also be um, avoiding all other incoming damage. And it allows you to risk things a little bit more in order to just get that kill off. Uh, but a general rule of thumb is to not risk too much as a magical sorcerer either. Like your own survival is more important than one, like than one enemy's death because you know you will get to try again. You can keep on kiting it out, setting up another burst combo, try again. So you know only do this risky playstyle to an extent. Um, and yeah. There, is more, there are more cases in which you roll dodge, like for example if you see a, um, somebody, a sniper that came out of stealth or something, or there's a night blade that cast ambush on you or something like that, you know there's going to be a lot of damage incoming, you just do again a shield into a roll dodge. Uh, if you get uh, like CC'd and you take no damage as well, what you see me do a lot is a break free cancelled into a roll dodge. Uh, for me that, like the keybinds are just literally scroll wheel up and scroll wheel down, so it's just like that, um, and it's the same as bash, so I just like did a real quick bash, which will be a break free into a roll dodge like that, and that will just release you from all kinds of control that somebody can possibly have on you. And it's a great way of mobility as well. Now, um, just a couple more notes that I want to mention. Uh, first is on overload. I haven't mentioned it, I mentioned that yet, but I get that question a lot that people don't see me use elemental weapon when uh, I'm using overload. But is this literally the same thing as on just normal light attacks? I do light attack, elemental weapon, and if I have overload, I just do overload light, uh, elemental weapon. But often, with my overload, I'm dealing so much damage that I know when somebody is like at 30% health or something, I'm going to start doing those roll dodge animation cancels, and then you, just, you don't see the elemental weapon anymore. It just goes like this, which makes it appear like I only casted an overload, but there was also an elemental weapon in that. Um, but yeah, that's just a quick note on overload. Then another common question I often get is the choice of spam ball being elemental weapon or crushing shock. Um, they are both good. You can use either of them. The best advice I can always give to these things is try them both. See which one you prefer. Personally, I prefer elemental weapon. You always see me use that. And the main reasons for that is that an elemental weapon there's, there's, there's two main reasons basically. The first is when I open up a uh, burst combo, like for example I'm running around on, on, on an open field or in a tower or in whatever, and I'm opening up by doing an elemental weapon with nothing and then light attack curse and I start with my burst like that, you know? And the second reason is, uh, so next to this initial burst, that if I cast an elemental weapon with a light attack, and somebody dodges that light attack I have casted before the elemental weapon, that will have that charge. Um, so somebody dodges that light attack, then the next light attack will also have the elemental weapon. I'll show this showcase this really quick by just casting a light attack into nowhere, so it does not consume the elemental weapon, much as if somebody would roll dodge the light attack. 
I will still have the elemental weapon charge on the light attack following. And if I have something like a fragment after that, that's actually a real, really nice burst, like this. Because then I have that light attack, the elemental weapon, and the fragment hitting at the same time. And I can time that right when somebody comes out of Roll Dodge. Um, so that's why, you know, I prefer Elemental Weapon. Crushing Shock does have its benefits too. For example, the ranged interrupt is really nice to have, but I often just make use, uh, you know, with Streak to stun people or just uh, normal bashes, because I have more than enough stamina in basically all cases now. Um, yeah, and the last note I want to finish off with when it comes to gameplay is the uh, potions. Also, question I see sometimes is, yeah, which poisons do I use? How do I switch between potions or whatever? Um, mostly, I will be using spell power potions, uh, just you know, for the damage, of course. Sometimes, when I'm under a lot of pressure and I'm only interested in kiting something out or in holding my ground somewhere, if I've already killed a couple of people and there's more people incoming, um, then I will switch to uh, a tripod. And the way I do that is with an add-on. The add-on is called uh, Grey Mind Quick Slot Bar. This one over here, and it simply allows me to keybind, uh, like a, a button, to change my potion. So I don't have to use that scroll wheel, and like switching a potion goes really quickly. Um, and then uh, two more potions that are important to mention is the detection potions. Every time I'm fighting Nightblade, so I want to kill Nightblade, I swap to detection potion. And when I'm using a build with critical surge, I will be using the immovability portions here with um, immovability, major prophecy, and magicka. But yeah, um, that's it for this bit of basic explanation. Now I will follow this up with the uh, gameplay and the commentary on that, where I will show some of these things I just mentioned in practice, but more importantly, I will um, show you just how I go around and what I am thinking while I fight. In this particular clip I will have a keep fight for you. It will deal with me fighting a bunch of opponents at the same time of course, but there's also going to be quite a few different situations. Uh, I will be going pretty much all over the place in this keep, killing some people here and there, and I will tell you what I do in this fight, what goes on in my head, and tactics that are really important for Magic Castle also to use. Now you can see in this clip I'm using the Critical Search and Boundless Storm variant I was talking about in the guide. This is a quite nice of a setup for Key specifically because you will often be in melee range and things like Guards are also going to be in melee range. This means your Boundless is going to proc your Critical Search quite a lot. There's also a lot of LOS which makes it safe to use Dark Conversion should, should the Critical Search unit not be sufficient. That being said, let's start the clip. There's a bunch of DC attacking me here, so I'm also like going to go in LOS here get my shields up, get a dark conversion going maybe, and have some sustain. Now you see there's immediately two DC and some guards coming up, even more DC, I streak through them. That's the first important tactic to remember here, streaking two people, both for offensive and defensive reasons. This one of the defensive reasons to just get some time to get on top of this tower. Now you see I got on top of this tower, only one guy followed me here, so I'm instantly going to burst him down, just attack the first thing that comes up here. I missed the fragment, but that's no problem because he did not break the CC. Then I go back down, looking for more enemies to fight here. You see this guy here who doesn't have any buffed up or anything. I'm going to focus him because he seems to be the weakest target. However, they're all attacking me. There's like five people. Uh, so I'm going to take it careful and go back again. You see, you see that they are all looking at me as well. This is a good way to tell just that you know they're all out the offensive, all focusing on me. I tried to go for that guy again. However, there's a barrier and the gate now. So I'm going to kite it further, go up the tower again. Um, with a Dark Conversion as I go into the LOS because I was CC immune and it's a good time to cast a Dark Conversion then. Here again a CC for defensive reasons, just in order to give, give me the time to get my shields up and all that, to get some time for me to get away. I go on top of this tower, however I get negated, there's still guards around, so I'm going to keep on kiting it. You can see there's like 7 people or something around, so I'm going to keep on kiting to the next tower. However, I'm not going to do that all in one go. I'm not going to immediately streak into the next tower because I want the people to keep want these people to keep on chasing me. I go on top of this tower, then you see them all clumping up there, and then I try to attack somebody who is in the back line. However, nobody really went in. There's not really anybody alone in the back line, so that didn't work. So instead I kill the first guy that comes up in the tower again. Because he too is very isolated from the rest of his group. I can make sure that I can burst somebody without being constantly pressured by other people. Now I see these people were running away, I can attack them in the back, it's a nice thing to have. This guy gets pulled out of stealth by uh, Streak, he takes a little damage from it, I instantly notice that, and I finish him off with the uh, Fury at the end as well then. 
Here I go in a little bit of LOS while they are coming to me and then I go and I again try burst combo somebody. However, this guy is tanky, there's also a lot of healing going around, that's not going to work out. Then I do this little bit of an LOS, I just go around the corner and then back again. It completely throws that guy off guard. That's just a nice way to get rid of some people sometimes that are actively hitting me. Here again I see this one guy alone, just like in the previous time I can try and focus him. However, he is defending himself and is also healing going around, so I didn't manage to get that off. I'm going to continue going in and out of LOS. This guy is just standing there with a sauna board, not really doing anything. He looks weak and indeed he is squishy, so quickly by casting overload and just focusing that guy I can get him down one burst combo. You can see here that I uh, then go in LOS again, I'll go back and forth, I bash the guy that is rezzing. Um, that guy I just killed, however that's now in the gate so I'm gonna have to go off again and go back on top of the tower uh, to see if I can hold my ground. However at this point I see that the rest has completed and the gate is still there so it's not going to be worth staying here. I'll try one last burst combo here because this guy is just blocking with a bow, however there is too much healing going on. I try to streak into that little corridor, that little gate, however the streak did not happen, I just fall down because there's a little bit of lag going around sometimes. So I'm going to... Uh, do a burst combo on the sorcerer again. Thing is, still as before, the healing is going around. To be honest, at this point, I might as well just go and leave the tower. So I'm gonna go up here on the top of the thing, and here I'm going to burst the first guy that comes up again, just like before. I get this guy with it, quite nice. And then there's the next guy over here. He takes a lot of damage from simply the uh, fragment, the overload, and the uh, fragment. Uh, and, and, and the element weapon I think it was, and that's how I got a second kill there. Then there's this guy here who's going down, unfortunately the streak did not CC him so I'm gonna have to chase him down a little bit. You can see here that that streak right there is a bit uh, like clumsy, again due to the lag. It's important to have your streak game on point, you don't want to make mistakes like that one in the middle of combat, but it was just that guy here so it is okay. The fight kinda ends here in anticlimactic fashion, however there's a Nightblade in stealth, I quickly go and bring out stealth with streak, you gotta be quick as soon as you see that little red uh, particle effect from a Nightblade. He did not break the CC, even if he would have, his chances of survival were low because I had Curse and uh, Streak ready to bring him out of stealth. Uh, that's the end of this third part. First part, it continues here. Now I see this guy coming out here with his Jesus Beam at 100% health and this is going to be an easy kill. I don't even need to cast shields because, well, Jesus Beam at 100% doesn't deal, 100% health doesn't deal any damage and next to that there's only guards on me. So that's just a quick little kill. I see more people coming at me, so here this guy, uh, I'm going to try and focus him, however he is constantly roll dodging. And I get a little bit too greedy because now I get focused by a lot of skills at once. I do this one streak to quickly get out of uh, the fight there. However, I also let my critical surge go down, which is a bad thing to do when you have this kind of build because it's important to have your buffs up permanently. Now, I have a bunch of people in this little corridor here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to constantly streak back and forth to them. It's going to do two things. First of all, it's going to stun them and they'll have to turn their camera. That means I have some offensive windows to cast my, my bursts and my shields every time. And secondly, I'm going to be in their back line every time I streak through them. And the targets that I have died before will always like backpedal a little bit. And that way, when I go to the back line, they'll be right in front of me again and I can finish them off. Here again, a weak target, I go, I do a uh, streak through them, then I'm in the back line again, I can finish it off like that, and I streak through them again. So they again have to turn their camera and all that, even if they don't get CC'd, it's nice, it creates a little bit of time for you. Here, this guy, again, he I streak through him, I just see the opportunity that he's at low health, a quick fury and fragment deals with it. This guy here too, he's taking a lot of damage, a fury deals with it as well, also from the constantly it's streaking too, it does a little bit of damage, it's quite nice like that. Then I try to do the same thing with that guy again, however, However, it is close to the keep, that's a risky move, plus my surge is down again, which is a bad thing to do. Plus, I use too much of my overload. Often I like to like stop using overload at like 100%, 120 ultimate and toggle it off again, so I still have an undo ready that I can use. Um, and now you can see that a bunch of people are going to be chasing me, so I'm going to cut that out, of course. I go inside this little corridor knowing that then I'm going to streak and people have to turn their camera again. Again, just to create a little bit of extra time. Here, luckily, I... Uh, like talk it off my overload earlier, which means that uh, now I have my charged up uh, undo despite like even though I didn't have it before. Streak through them for defensive purposes again, just create some time to go up that stair, get my resources back. I charge up an elemental weapon before I start attacking, um, even like if I don't have anybody in the range yet. 
just because I know that the light attack with the curse and the cost afterwards will already have some of that, some of that damage from the elemental weapon. Then you see I can go I go back and forth over this little wall. This just forces them to, to, to follow me back and forth all the time. It's a lot of LOS this way. Here again I try to burst the guy by streaking through. However, I'm in the middle of that group and the fragment went to the wrong guy, which means that I did not kill the kill there. Um, I'm not taking that much pressure, so I'm going to try and do that again. Set up a burst with the curse and then a streak and a fragment. However, the fragment went to the wrong guy again. No problem, and I can try that again. There's not that many people yet either. I'm just quickly gonna go outside the keep, uh, outside of the tower to see if there's any more to focus anyone else to focus, but now there's only a lot of guys, so I streak back and I go in LOS. There's a little bit of a freeze here, but basically I try to attack this guy that is outside of the keep, however he's defending himself pretty well and I'm taking a lot of pressure and my buffs are running out, so this is not the right time to be in the middle of a group of people, so I'm gonna go in LOS again. You see, I, I go back a little bit after I went across that wall, just because they have to turn the cameras twice then, they don't expect a movement change like that, and you can make good use of that. Now here there's only two people, I stunned both of them, while I do my curse, but my curse got pushed, so I'll just have to restart my combo with again a curse, overload elemental weapons, fury, etc. Eventually he blows up from that because it's just too much pressure. Get my bounders up. It's also nice to run up a stair right after you cast your bounders because you're going to be a lot faster this way and it's a lot faster than streak as well. But the clip kind of ends here because now some reds are taking it over as well. I get the last kill there real quick. But now it is just the reds in this keep and there's not much uh, going on anymore. Just some more fight with these reds, but it is the same principles as I was talking about earlier. A bit of an anticlimactic ending, but that's why I used clip, this clip for um, my gameplay, uh, for, for my commentary. Now, the main points here, uh, like by far, like the main point uh, overall to take home here is the uses of streak both offensively and defensively to create some time for offensive purposes to get a burst combo or to finish a burst combo or for defensive uh, purposes in order to have a dark conversion or some shields or just to get away. A second uh, thing to remember here is the usage of LOS. Those quick turns around the corner, they take a lot of pressure off of you because people have, well, they can't talk to you anymore, you're in LOS, but they also constantly have to turn their camera and you can make very unpredictable movements like that. I hope this commentary has been useful for you. If you want to see more like it, um, I will try to get more commentaries up. I do have some nice clips for gameplay videos as well. Um, so stay tuned for that on YouTube. Next to that, there's also Patreon. In case you want to have more personal, personalized guidance like, the, you can, like this, you can send me clips or we can duel um, or things like that. And I will tell you what is doing, what you're doing right, what could be improved on. No matter if you are a beginning master or already a bit more advanced, I think I can help you with this, so it might be worth to check out uh, Patreon. Um, in any case, I thank you all very much for watching. Again, I hope it's been useful, and I will see you all in the next one. <laughs>